How are you doing guys? My name is Danny Mulligan and today we're going to talk about squat mechanics. Okay, there's a big misconception. Um, lots of people tell me they can't squat. I'm just not built for squatting. My mechanics aren't right for squatting. Um, but this is actually quite a misleading thing really. I think this is because people have learned to squat off somebody that's given them this sort of robotic format that feet shoulder width, chest up, and it's just like all this complete robotic one fits all policy. And if that didn't work for them, they sort of gave up on squatting or told themselves they couldn't really squat or at least couldn't get deep in the squat or whatever. They're not just built for squatting. Yeah, what we're gonna discuss is what a good squat should look like, what are the expectations of a good squat? So you all gain a full understanding of that. Second of all, um, different adaptations we can do to our squat to improve it. Okay, so changes you can make to your squat to help you get a better squat. And then stretches and exercises also to improve your squat, okay? During the video, I'm also gonna to touch on a subject called butt winking. Lots of people mention it, you hear it passed around if you haven't heard it before, well now you have. Um, butt winking, we're gonna to, to touch on it in a sec. Um, but basically, yeah, we'll go through that during the video and hopefully you'll gain a full understanding of exactly what that is. Okay, but first of all, we're gonna look on what a good squat looks like. So here it is. Okay, so the bar wants to be on top of the back. This will act as a shelf for the bar. You want to sit back and down into your heels, okay? Try and make it as naturally sitting down as possible. Don't stick your bum right out, but you do want to leave the squat with your bum sticking it back, okay? At the bottom of the squat, we want our thigh minimum parallel with the floor, okay? Here we actually go below, which is great, but we want trying to see a minimum of that. Now, if you see the bottom of the squat, there is a small hip shift but her spine does not go beyond neutral, okay? It stays, majority of it is in an extended position and does not go beyond neutral. It's when we go into flexion that we're in trouble. So if we, if we get a look at another angle, so we'll take a look at her lumbar, it actually stays, spine doesn't go beyond flexion and that's when we're in trouble. Okay, so now we've seen a good, uh, a good squat, what it looks like in real life, this is a good visual to give an understanding of what a good squat should look like. So, if you see, we've got good dorsiflexion, good ankle mobility, again, good hip mobility. And if you look, the back and the calf, they run parallel, okay? That's the most efficient and most mechanically sound squat. The reason being, I'm going to give you something you can relate to. If you've all been in a chest press and you've got really low into the rep and you struggle to get it up, but you get it past this sticking point and you fire it up that last hurdle, and that's because at the bottom of the rep it's hardest. At the deepest point of the rep, your muscle is, it's always harder for, the, for, the, for you, as you, you to get it up. And it's the same with squatting. To maximise efficient squatting, we want to make each joint do as little as possible, so that you're sharing the load and doing as little as possible. And that's the most mechanically efficient squat. And here, you can get better development in your legs, okay, whereas now I'm going to show you a back squat. So now we're just hinging at the hip mainly to break depth. The knee's not doing much, the, the um, ankle's not doing much, but the hip's doing an awful lot. And the hip will do a lot because it's got a big deep socket joint so it can take it and we find it easier to adapt this squat. But long term, you're not going to get super heavy and super good at squatting. You might adapt this quickly and lift a good respectable weight, but you'll never get super heavy as opposed to this squat, where it's more efficient and you're gonna get each joint is, if you look as well, the bar would be here and it'd be directly above the line, your plumb line, so you, your centre of mass is here, if the bar was here. On this one, our centre of mass, if the bar was here, it'd be over the knees and over the toes, not where you want it. If the back's doing far too much and long term, you're gonna develop a good back or if not, injure your back. Okay, but you're not going to develop big, strong legs from this. Okay, also, this is where we see, and you'll find, maybe if you've brought your squat into a low bar squat, this might be the squat you're already doing, okay? If you brought your bar down, I'll discuss it later in the video, if you bring the bar here, then the centre of mass is where you want it to be. If you brought it lower down, on the back, and I'll talk about that if you don't know what a low bar squat is, and that's where people bring it lower down so the centre of mass is lower and often these people squat like this 
because once they have it there, they feel really uncomfortable and they feel like they're going to concave. But when it's lowered down, the centre of mass is further down. And that's how they'll break depth, OK? So I hope that was a bit of a better visual for you. Okay, so now we're going to talk about adaptations to our squat, okay? How we can adapt our squat, very simply, to improve it and try and get better range or at least parallel, like we've discussed, is the expectation we want. If we can get below, even better, but like we said, minimum expectation, parallel with the um, floor. And another thing, if you're lifting some heavy ass weight on squat and you can't hit parallel and you're telling everybody you can squat such and such amount and you can't hit parallel, Quite frankly, you can't squat that amount of weight. Okay, so let's go into it. But I'm going to try and demo ways we can adapt our squat. So if you come this way here, and I'll just show you a real narrow squat. And if you look, it's going to be very uncomfortable for me. And to try and break depth, my knees are really twisting it out. And I can't, it's a real struggle. So I'm here, I'm in that, that you know, shoulder width apart, just past my course PT position. Because this is what they'll say, if, you know what I mean? Lots of PTs, they sort of have this conception that we must squat this in this manner. If you look, my bum's a really long way. And I find it quite difficult to squat like that. So, what I, what I would do is bring my legs a little wider. I'm not talking excessive, but I brought them just outside shoulder width. I've turned the toes out slightly. Again, perfectly safe to do so. Okay, now chest up, and I'm keeping the elbows under. I'm then going to sit back. And if you look, I'm a lot more comfortable and I sit a lot more into it easy. I can drive out of that pretty much easier, okay? Now we have this conception that all your joints are perfectly in line, and yeah, your knee wants to be above your leg, or your foot rather. But if your knee's not below your hip, you're not in trouble. It's a very movable joint and a very deep socketed joint, okay? And if we refer again back to your elite lifters, they do not squat, none of them, especially at your elite, elite level, squat like this, okay? So, so if you bring your legs out, you can then get, you should be able to make better depth, okay? And again, turning the feet out as well is also going to help. Other thing you can do, now, this is something I wouldn't want you to adapt personally, but if you're very tall and have a long torso, this is an adaption you can make. I used to squat like this, it can lead to bad habits. But, it also, for some people, is better. Now, as we discussed in the perfect squat example, the, the bar wants to be above your heel line, and that makes it like a perfectly mechanical squat, like loading in like a spring type. Well, what you can do, in order to do that um, for taller people, because if you've got a really long torso, what tends to happen, if I just show you, we get this sort of scenario, sort of, yeah, and if you look, the bar is nowhere near the line of my heel. So in this position, what you can do is drop it down into what we call a low bar squat. So if you look, I've taken the bar a bit lower on my back, not on that sort of nice meaty part, it's down lower. Okay, I've grabbed it lower, and it's dead safe still there. The weight's not in the arms, I'm just driving the elbows under, and the weight's still on the back. Okay, you're just pushing it against the back. Okay, and it will not move from that position. And then you squat down. For me now, I used to squat like this, and now it's a little bit uncomfortable, okay? But if you have a lot taller torso in relation to your body, a great option, because the weight, again, will be further back over the heel, okay? And that's important. If we break squats down into basic principle, it's just improving your mechanics the best you can, okay? Um, you can be really, really strong, but often, these guys that are really strong, if they just improve their mechanics a little bit better, their body would be more efficient, okay? And this is one of the reasons Olympic lifters are so strong. Their squat is mastered, their technique is mastered, so it's the most efficient squat. So they're using their body most efficiently, not just hurling up because they're really powerful, which they are, but the most efficient way possible in order to get the weight up better, okay? So, that's a small adaptation we can make to our squat. Okay, so just you also gain a little bit more of an understanding of why 
bringing your legs wider helps. Right, this is a good visual, so you guys gain a good understanding, okay? And I often think stuff like this helps. So if you look at this length, it's like a training bar. Length of metal, okay, as it is now, is quite long, okay? Now this is representing if you were in a real shoulder width type squat and it, your length of uh, femur would be this long. But now if you look, if I bring the legs wider, so this is my hip and that's my knee, and I bring it wider, it should start to look smaller, yeah? Now what that does, you imagine the weight, if this was my uh, femur, it's a lot longer, obviously. But if you imagine this is my femur, the bar would be up here somewhere, yeah? If you now look, below it would be the heel. Whereas here, the bum's got to stick out a long way, then the, then, so the, the bar is up here, and then it's over the, the knee, generally speaking. So when you bring it wider, this is why it helps. And I hope that actually gives you a good visual of what is going on when we're bringing our legs wider. So rather than sitting really over the heel, we're bringing it wider, and it should sit down a lot easier, yeah? Okay, I hope that made a lot more sense, okay? So now we're gonna talk about butt winking, okay? So butt winking. A butt wink is basically, if we sit into our squat and we sit down, as you come lower and lower, this, your lumbar spine moves from the extended position into the butt wink, and if you see, we get that sort of pelvic tilt and it moves. Okay, and that's what we associate as a butt wink. Now, we need to be clear on this, okay? Um, PTs in particular, if they're picking faults at people's squat, or you come and say, oh, can you take a look at my squat, see if it's okay? They often go, oh God, you sh you, you, your hips are moving, and they get scared when they see this all of a sudden, and they say, they see that sort of change. Now it's important. Spinal extension is a range. Okay, so bear that in mind when you're judging someone's squat or judging your own squat, okay, it is a range, okay, because from this position, I'm very extended, okay, I've got a real big lumbar curve, but why is that not a problem, yeah, it's when we go into flexion that we're in trouble, okay, as soon as we head towards like a neutral spine, so you're just nice in a neutral position, then you've got to think, right, you shouldn't probably go any lower than that, but... Here's the other thing as well, is we expect minimum that we can hold that extension, so thigh, parallel with the floor. If we get below parallel and we're still extended, then great. But if not, then no problem. But the intention is that minimum requirement really is we've got full extension at parallel. Okay, so do bear that in mind. But I'm just gonna go through in detail again, just so you understand. So. Uh, butt wink, yeah, so I'm coming down, I've got this extended, you see my spine nice and straight, I'm out there, it's great, and then it's probably about now about to go, just as I hit parallel or below parallel, okay? Is that a problem? No, because I, I hit what we call accepted range, but for me personally, um, I'd like to get below that anyway, so I always think it looks, you look like a badass when you squat a lot lower than parallel, so I will be trying to do that, but that is what butt winking is. So, just be sure, let me just go over that again, that we're not too like frightened of this butt wink, okay? Because people see a bit of ship tiffs and they'll get all woo, uh, and it's really not always that bad, okay? Just because the hips shift and there's a change, doesn't mean it's unsafe, okay? If we go on to sort of elite, and I'll use these example a lot, if you go to your sort of elite Olympic lifters that weigh sort of 60 kilos wet through and can squat, 100 kilos they're at the top of their game and a lot of them get a hip shift but the spine doesn't go into flexion it's when it goes into flexion and we know that that's unsafe because you can't load a bar in this sort of crunched over position and when it is there then we're in trouble okay and later on I'm going to discuss actually exercises and stretches we can do to help correct a butt wink and if we've got it try and cure it okay but as the minimum expectancy, just so you're aware, butt, link, butt wink, try not to occur above parallel, okay? Yeah, well, it never wants to occur, but if, if you're doing a squat and you can't get below parallel without butt winking, there's a problem, okay? And there's no excuse for it. I don't care about your mechanics. It is solvable, okay?
this is the first exercise to improve our squat. This is a, basically a split squat on a step. And the reason we put the step there is if you, see what it does, it increases the flexion in the hip, okay? And a, and a well flexed hip in the squat is what you need to squat deep and low. So if you look my thighs actually below parallel, and if you actually look at that side on, take the back leg out of the equation, it actually looks like a squat. So here what you need to do is keep your chest up and push in to the rep, but keeping the front heel flat, that's very important, okay? Push your hip down into the rep and you should feel it stretch the hip flexor, okay? And this is a great, um, great exercise to improve our squat. Okay, so next exercise is basically essentially a goblet squat with a plate. Now what we do here, what I would get any of my clients to do, me included, is um, I'd get them to do holds at different points, the top range, the middle, and the bottom. Hold for about three seconds, okay? And what we're doing here is just using this as a counterbalance to get his range and get his low into the squat. Okay, lower back extension. So if we have butt wigging occur, this is great for that because we're stretching the hamstrings whilst keeping the extension in the back, which is really important. What I would recommend is you do this in front of a mirror so that you can see yourself side on, seeing that you're fully extended still, okay? It's come down, hold for three seconds and then back up and do that for about eight reps. Now what that's gonna do over the course of the set you're going to get lower and lower and lower. And the, the, the goal is to have your body in a 90 degree angle from your hamstring down your back. Um, and that will create any restriction from your squat and decrease any restriction in your squat. It's like I'm stretching my hip flexor, but I'm actually not. What I am stretching is, though my hip flexor is probably getting stretched a little bit, what I am stretching is my calf, okay? So I'm really pushing all my weight down above um, the foot. Um, but with the raised raised platform on my toes, that increases uh, the calf stretch and makes it more intense and, and gives us more um, stretch, essentially. Okay, another good calf stretch. Okay, this is my favourite um, mobility exercise of all for improving that, especially mobility in the ankles. But it would definitely help you squat, if you, especially if you lack mobility um, in the ankles because you're sitting into a squat but it's, what you're doing is putting the bar on top of your legs and applying pressure onto the ankles and this way um, it's increasing dorsiflexion but it's teaching you to sit low into a squat too okay and if you struggle with dorsiflexion or you have bad dorsiflexion that's a common mistake with hip flexor if you just watch this I can drop into this incredibly easy not even touching my hip flexor how many, you see lots of personal trainers advise this, or lots of people do this, okay, not really touching it, okay. What you want to do, if I turn it this way, is lean into it just a little bit, then pelvis, anterior tilt, okay, get it there, squeeze the pelvis anteriorly, so your bum should be tightening, and then lean into it. And now that is, it's gone up from, if this, if my first stretch was a two out of 10, it's gone up to about a seven, okay? Really, really stretch out that hip flexor, okay? This is really important. And I would hold that stretch for about 45 seconds each leg. So as we've discussed, uh, if you're butt wigging or you're struggling to make depth, flexibility in the hamstrings is crucial. And this here is just a basic hamstring stretch, but again, it's great for the hamstring. Hold it for a minimum of 45 seconds and try and keep the legs straight. So this here is a glute stretch, okay? Try and keep your heel in the middle, uh, your midline of your body on the top of the step and the back heel down to increase the stretch if you want to increase the stretch. All of that aside, and they're all great exercises to increase our squat and better our squat, one thing we need to take into account, okay, ask yourself if they're suitable for you. Now, what I mean by that is, 
If you're an experienced lifter and you've come across this video and you feel like you're quite an experienced lifter, you've been squatting for a long time, take myself for instance, I've been squatting for a long time and I really adapted that sort of, when, especially when I first started, the real forward lean to break depth because I was, you know, I heard the whole you should, must hit parallel and I just had that in my account and I didn't really know how to squat well but in order to hit parallel I really brought the bar into low bar squat and hit depth and now actually I squat heavier with better form because I've learned what, what a better squat is. But how I corrected myself, and this is where you guys need to understand this, ask yourself if you're that experienced lifter and if you've got a real strong posterior chain, if you can deadlift quite a lot. And in that case, and you don't do much front squatting, then maybe you should adapt more front squatting. The reason being, because we can do all the sort of split squats that I've showed you, increase the mobility, to increase flexion at the hip, and all these things that are great for a good squatters and good squatters need them. But if you've got a really, really developed posterior chain, you do lots and lots of back squats and deadlifting, um, and you don't do any front squatting, then you will, just naturally over time, develop this posture. Because it's really well developed. Your body wants to do what it's best at. You need to start loading this front section so you stay more upright into the squat. Yeah, you need to start developing this front section. That way, you'll even them out. So you, so. If you think of anterior and posterior, or front and back, how often do you load this front section under serious strain? If you've ever done front squats, your abs burn after front squats because it's really loading up this posture. That way, you're going to maximize efficiency because it, you, your front squat will teach you to be more upright into the squat because you've got the weight in front of you. It acts as a counterbalance and it forces your body upright. So then, when it comes to your back squats, you should be able to lift more because you're not doing the forward lean, okay? So here's a quick demo of what a front squat should look like. Keep the back fully extended, chest up, and sit down into the heels. The weight is held across the front of the body. If you notice, they're a lot more upright than a back squat. Okay, thanks for watching, guys. I know we covered a lot in that video. There was an awful lot to be covered, um, but I hope you've actually learned from that and your squat mechanics will be better from this video. If they are, if you feel like you've learned something, Please drop me a comment, please subscribe, please like, I need all the support I can get, but until next time, I'll see you later team.